The world doesn't need more products, it needs better versions of existing products. And today I'll be bringing in into the den a vision of a company which is going to transform the sleep market in the UK and globally. Oh, that looks comfy. Yeah. This business will be highly successful and I assume that we'll get at least one offer, maybe, maybe two, maybe three, who knows. But I do have a red line in terms of equity for what I'd be prepared to, to give away. I'm not here to sell myself short and I will walk away from offers that are not fair. Hello, Dragons. Uh, my name is James Higgins and I'm the founder and CEO of Ethical Bedding. We sell the most sustainable and luxurious bedding in the UK. Our sheets are our hero products. They're made using eucalyptus compared to cotton. It uses 95% less water in production, 30% less energy, no herbicides and pesticides, no farmable land. So a bit about me. After years of working in the city, my work no longer filled me with joy or gave me a sense of purpose day to day. So using my love of nature as a driving force, Ethical Bedding was founded. Ultimately, my goal is to leave the world a better place than I found it. And I invite all of you to join me on that journey. So how much money are you raising? Great question. I always forget that when I've been practicing. £150,000 for 6%. Bedding products made using eucalyptus pulp is the proposition from London-based James Higgins. In your boxes, there are some pillowcases and just one pillow protector. So if you would like a pair of them, you'll have to go to our website <laughs> and, buy, and buy another one. James is seeking £150,000 in return for 6% of his business. Stephen Bartlett is first to peel back the sheets and find out more. James, so t talk to me about your, your sales to date then. Can you talk me through when you launched the business and the sort of sales you've had since then? So the business was formed in February 2020. So in year one, we did 12K revenue, 12K loss. Year two, we did 70K revenue, 110 loss. This year, we'll do 500K rev, break even. I can't get my head around this valuation on that basis. You're valuing the business at 2.5 million. H how do you make sense of that? The valuation? Yeah. Well, if you, if you look at... So if you look at what profit we're going to have in two years' time, we're looking at... <laughs> in two years' time? Yeah. I love it when people do that. I'm investing now, though, right? So if, if 2.5 million is the future valuation, what's the valuation today? It's whatever someone's willing to pay for it. Is that how you calculated the value? Well, given the early growth stage of the business, it's, it's impossible to, for me to give you an answer to that question, which is that you might be happy with. James, I'm going to be really honest with you, mate. You have started off on, on the back foot. Oh, right, OK. I think coming in with a valuation like that and then giving such a cocky answer to Stephen when he asked for a justification, you really got my back up to start with. Do you watch Dragon's Den a lot? I do. Yeah. And where would you say that 150k that you've asked kind of sits on the scale of what we get asked for? I, I understand that it's on the high end. Yeah. You've asked us for an obscene amount of money and offered us such a small stake in your business. And the problem is, because you've come in here with such a punchy valuation, we're not really prepared to cut you much slack. Ah, uh, OK. Which is a shame, because standing in front of us five here is literally a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for you. Ooh. And it is the thing that could turn the needle on your business and make it go from zero to hero overnight. Of course. Not the best of starts for James, as Sarah Davies takes exception to his valuation. The Den's green queen, Deborah Meaden, now wants to find out just how eco-friendly the entrepreneur's eucalyptus products actually are. Can I just explore what you mean by ethical bedding? Because ethical co covers many things, and I'd like you to tell me what you mean by ethical bedding. Um, so it covers everything. So obviously we're a certified B Corporation. We donate at least 1% of, of, of revenue to global sustainability initiatives. Um, all of the packaging, of course, has the, is t totally recyclable. Every single last consideration that we could, that we could have thought of from a product perspective, uh, we, we have tried to. 
OK, and what have you got that's proprietary? What would stop me saying, I need to put together an ethical bedding business? What have you got that would stop me from doing that? There wouldn't really be anything. So we'd be a couple of years ahead in terms of branding an existing customer base. But ultimately, no, there's nothing to stop anyone, but I wouldn't view it as um, taking a slice of my pie. I'd say that we're making the pie bigger, and if people are doing the right thing, then that's fine as well. Right? That's OK. Despite having no protection on his products, James is relaxed about potential competition. Tuka Suleiman wants to find out how financially committed he is to his eco-bedding offering. How much money have you personally invested in this? Uh, director's loans are somewhere in the region of 200,000. Is that your own cash you put in? There's my own cash and I have some more cash available. Um, to be able to put in if I, if I need to. How much more have you got? Somewhere in the region of, of 150, if I was to put that in. Another 150? Yeah, something like that. Right. And, and how much other money have you raised um, apart from that? There are about another currently in the region of 150, 170 in, in business loans. This is definitely a complete startup. And I sometimes think that it's not best to raise other people's money at an early stage of a business venture like this. It's so much better to put your own capital into this and hold on to as much as you can at the early stages, if you have it. You're lucky enough to have been successful before, you've got capital to back this. If you would run out of money, I would get it. But it doesn't make sense that you're not doing that. So my house is, is on the market. Oh, so you haven't got 150 k Liquid, no. Well, I asked you, how much money have you got that you could put in? And you said, oh, look, I could put in up to about 150k. Assets that I'm... Well, capital that I'm prepared to commit, yes. It's right, so you'd have liquid. to sell your house to put it in? Uh, my house is for sale anyway, and that's right. money that I've set aside to be able to, okay. to help. No, I, I, th I think that it's a great product, and I don't want to criticise the product, because I can't. I think, you're, I think you're onto something here, but the valuation is stratospherically wrong. And I don't think that that is attractive for somebody like me to want to put money into a business. And I don't want to get involved in having to chuck money in and put it into loans. And you've got enough loans that you'll be paying back for the next three years anyway. So, sadly, I'm out. Company debt proves to be a deal breaker for Peter Jones, and James loses his first dragon. But has he found a potential bedfellow in business in Stephen Bartlett. So I actually think you're really impressive. And really, like, in the den, I'm backing an entrepreneur first and foremost, and then secondary to that is the idea. When I look at you as an entrepreneur, I think that's a guy I'd love to invest in. But you valued the business at 2.5 million, and you're offering 6%. I don't know how I can get comfortable with that sort of risk equation. So although I think you're a great entrepreneur and I'd back you in another business with another proposition, I'm not going to back this business today and I'm going to say that I'm out. So I'm in a completely different space to Stephen. I would say maybe he's even the opposite end of the spectrum. My concern is actually with you as an entrepreneur. OK. I feel like what you've dished out in the den today, there's a lot of, a lot of spiel and talk but the reality is you are a small business. And I think there's a lot of water to go under the bridge before you can get from where you are today to where you are talking about being. So for that reason, I won't be investing today and I'm out. Thank you. Sarah Davies decides against joining James on his journey to making his bedding company a king-sized concern. Deborah Meaden is always interested in ethical enterprises is she ready to green light a deal? I think this is going to become a pretty mainstream product. You know, people are now beginning to understand cotton is a pretty nasty fabric. The chemicals used on making oh, yeah. it is really bad news. And people are waking up to that, and I'm seeing I'm already sleeping on bamboo pillows, you know, so it's, it's already beginning to happen. I think the big worry for me is the big business is just going to be part of the range. So I needed you to tell me there was something you did that was going to 
I'm going to own this. I'm, this is my space. This is my space. That's the intention. Yeah, it's not going to happen. OK. Because people are already moving into it. And you're going to start struggling. So I'm really sorry. I won't be investing. I'm out. James, um, overall view on your business, I think you've got something. However, I could create this whole collection for five grand. Um, easy, I'll, just... bet, I'll bet you 150 grand you can't. Sorry? I'll bet you 150 Take grand it. you can't. Take it. Good <laughs> bet. Fine. And I'll say that in this one fabric, I can get you all the sizes, everything within six weeks out of China. Look, I I I'll get to the point. Good. The point oh, is, I like the business. You've said that after that. <laughs> I like the business. The only thing that, that draws me back is you've got a lot of loans in here. Yeah. And they're all going to be paid. Correct. You know, and to me, if I was to invest, I want half your business. Oh, wow, OK. Yeah? Yeah. Because that's what it's worth. Is that an offer? OK. All right, James, I'm going to say where I, where I am. Um, so I would offer you all the money, but we'd go 50-50 partners. But I would add what you need. It's 150,000 for 50%. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't accept that offer. But thank you. But thank you. I, I, you, know. you want the counter? No, thank you. Don't. OK. All right. James, I <laughs> wish you all the best. I'm out. Good luck. A firm rejection of Tuka Suleiman's offer as James chooses to walk rather than negotiate. But he departs with his head held high. I had an offer from, from Tucker, but, but respectfully, I mean, it's just ludicrous, so it's not worth commenting on. They want to be getting a bargain, and I'm not here to, to give people bargains. I offered what I believe was the right value for that startup. I'm very comfortable with the outcome. It's business, and I trust in the path of life and the universe, and what will be will be, and we'll see what happens.